Today I'm gonna do macro photography with one restriction and that is to only use 1 20th of a second in shutter speed. And uh, I wanna try this restriction because I very often get lazy and only use high shutter speeds like 1 250th of a second. Uh, but uh, sometimes you can get very interesting and nice results with slower shutter speeds even though it is a bit trickier. So I'm gonna try that today just to see what kind of results we get and to learn something. Found a small raspberry. <laughs> Not sure if this could make an interesting photo, but let's try. Let's do high magnification. I think this particular shot looks a bit better uh, at a lower magnification, so you get the, some of the stem as well. Yeah, that's very nice. And thanks to the slow shutter speed we get a very bright green beautiful background. So how is it possible to shoot handheld insect photos at two times magnification with a, such a slow shutter speed? Shouldn't you get a lot of motion blur you might ask? And the answer to this is that I'm using a flash and that is the key. The flash is extremely fast, in most cases it's 1 10,000th or 1 20,000th of a second. And uh, if the flash light stands for the majority of the light in your picture, it will be as if I was using 1 10,000th, 1 20,000th in shutter speed on my camera and that will freeze any kind of action, no matter how much I'm shaking the camera or how much the insect is moving, it will freeze the action. The only thing you need to think about is that the light from the flash must be the majority of the light in your photo. If you are shooting in very slow shutter speeds in direct sunlight, then the sunlight will maybe stand for a big portion of the light in the scene and you will have a lot of motion blur. So you need to be in the shade probably uh, or maybe even be out on an overcast day to get the best results. I'm hanging out on the countryside right now where I grew up and it is so nice uh, because my mom has kind of let this garden become a bit wild uh, so there are so many wildflowers everywhere and it really seems like the insects love it here because there are so many insects everywhere uh, I can see that on any area around here there are a lot more insects than on the same space uh, close to where I live so it is really a macro photographer's dream to be out here taking photos I'm also flying some FPV because it's so much fun and uh, I kind of don't want to do that in the city because there are so many people there, but here I can fly more. Hey, hey. Hey. Are often coming from Yeah. <laughs> Butterflies are hard. Here we have something very small. Trying to stand so that I block the sun to get more shade in the photo. Now I'm gonna try to lift the leaf so that we can maybe get a brighter background. Maybe we can even get some sky in the background. Uh, kind of. Okay. Wasn't a great shot. 
But the good thing with the Pope shield is that, or any diffuser really that has this kind of design, is that it also helps block the sun a bit. And no matter if you're shooting at slow shutter speeds, as 120, or if you're shooting at fast shutter speeds, my experience is that direct sunlight on your subject in macro photography never looks good. You get these weird glaring patterns uh, on insects' uh, shells, and uh, yeah, the light is too harsh, it is not diffused enough, so uh, try to always block the sun and try to uh, make sure that the majority of the light is from your flash, which should be diffused, and you will get a beautiful result. beautiful white moth. I don't think I've photographed this particular species before. And it's very interesting that sometimes on sunny days when an insect that is normally extremely skittish is sitting on a wall like this, a wooden wall, for some reason they kind of are <laughs> completely okay with you photographing them a lot. I mean, check this guy. He, he doesn't care that I'm holding my finger one centimeter away. At least it's not caring that much. Uh, so sometimes wooden walls in sunlight can be beautiful opportunities to take photos of insects that are normally skittish. Um, I don't know if they just become lazy in the sun or if they get blinded or something, but he does not care that I'm here. He even jumped onto my hand. Let's try to get a shot. It would be more interesting to have it on a leaf or something. It would be look a bit more natural. Yes, okay. No, <laughs> he flew away. Uh, let's move on. I think it says something about the biodiversity here that I find three different bugs on the same flower. Uh, not something I see every day close to where I live. This is such a cute little insect. I suspect it might be a baby stink bug. Uh, but I don't know, please tell me. I think it's beautiful. I think this is one of the most beautiful insects I've seen this summer, if not the most beautiful, because it is so cute. <laughs> I love cute things. So I'm taking a lot of photos here to try to get one really good photo, hopefully. And when you find a new insect that you haven't photographed before, I think it's a really good idea to try to capture it from several different angles, if it stays around, and then try to explore from what angle does this insect look the most beautiful, and then try to take more photos from that angle and try to get the perfect background by moving around the leaf that it is sitting on uh, until you have a very beautiful background and a very beautiful composition. That is how I go about it when I find a very cooperative specimen like this one, uh, one that I really find beautiful, then I really try to uh, find the perfect angle to photograph it and find the perfect background to go with that angle. And today I found that a bug like this, I find it most beautiful if you shoot it from above so you can see the shell and the beautiful pattern there. Uh, still, you obviously want to get the eyes and the head in focus as well, if possible. And then I find the most beautiful background is usually a light green or blue one. So I try to hold it up against the sky or against the 
green background here while I'm taking many photos and while trying to maintain the angle that I found the most beautiful to get the best shot possible. I love to shoot insects sitting on flowers because it makes for some of the most beautiful backdrops that you can imagine in macro photography. Flowers usually provide a solid color that contrasts with the insect so you get a beautiful photo uh, with contrasting colors especially these flowers with yellow and white uh, because the insects usually have completely contrasting colors, dark colors so it becomes such a beautiful photo when you combine these um, so yeah, flowers are good backgrounds I think that was a red velvet mite, perhaps? Please tell me if I'm wrong. I just had a realization. Uh, when I look at my very early macro photos from this garden in 2017, when I was using the Canon 40mm reversed, I really loved the look of these photos and I always thought that that was due to the Canon 40mm lens that there was something special about that lens that made the photos glow in a different way but today I realized that what probably created that look was not the lens, not the flash, not the camera it was that I was shooting at generally slower shutter speeds back then it makes the photos look different, it makes them more dreamlike, more colorful um, yeah it's it's a different look than shooting at one 250th of a second and uh, the last few years I've been shooting mostly at one 200th or 250th of a second just because I'm lazy it always creates sharp results no matter what you do uh, but now I'm feeling I want to return back to shooting at slower shutter speeds because that look at least to me it is more beautiful Okay, so I think it is too bright here to get uh, sharp photos at slow shutter speeds with this guy. So I'm gonna move to the shade and see what we can get if we sit in the shade with the same subject. I think we will be able to get sharper photos. Yes, now we're talking. And we can still get some nice green background because the sun is shining here in the background. Sun is shining there, but not on the actual insect. And that is perfect for slow shutter speed macro photography. Then we can get those beautiful bright backgrounds, but the insect will still be sharp. This guy is so incredibly cooperative. He even kind of stops when he notices that I'm taking photos. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, this was definitely one of my favorite photos so far today. I love how it turned out. And I think it's partly due to the very slow shutter speed. And um, of course one twentieth of a second is extreme. If I were to try to take the best possible photos, maybe I should increase it to 150 or something like that. Uh, but sometimes it's nice to try the extremes, to learn something. And then when you have learned something, you can go back to whatever is optimal. Uh, but you should definitely try to explore the extremes in terms of all settings. Because you always learn something, you become a better photographer and you can use that knowledge later when you try to make the most beautiful photos possible. I see a really big grasshopper here. Not sure how to capture it best. Uh, 
he's sitting in the middle of all these flowers but let's try magnification should obviously be pretty low not sure if any of the photos were decent I think not but yeah grasshopper is another example of an insect are they insects I think so an insect that I don't see too often where I live but out here on the countryside at my mother's place they are quite common Oh man, I'm having so much fun out here. There's so much to shoot. The weather is perfect and I'm really enjoying this. Unfortunately, it's not many days per year that I can be here in this season, in this weather. Uh, so I'm really trying to get the most out of it. And if I could choose one place, one time of the year to do macro photography, this is pretty much the perfect one, at least in Sweden. Thank you for watching this video. See you very soon again. Don't forget to subscribe if you like macro photography. That is what this channel and I am about. See you soon again.